Hey, welcome to The Art of Code. My name is Martijn, and what you see behind me here is a Koch curve, and it's an effect that I made uh, a few years ago. Um, there, there's a tutorial about it, link is in the description. Uh, and somebody commented on that video and asked uh, how to do that same effect, but in 3D. And uh, I thought about it for a while, and I came up with, I think I can come up with a few different ways to do that, and so I thought I'd make a video about it. And uh, so yeah, so if that interests you, then definitely stick around. All right, I have here a website, shadertoy.com. Uh, if you are not new here, then you know what this is about. If you are new here, uh, this is a website that you can go to to code uh, visual effects from scratch uh, and you don't need to install anything or uh, it's, it's not difficult at all. So uh, you can either sit back with a cup of tea and just watch me do this or you can, uh, and I encourage you to do this, uh, you can go to shadertoy.com and try to follow along. Um, all right, so uh, let's just have a look at this effect that I that I made. So uh, I'll type in Koch, and uh, the effect that I made was this one. And uh, so that's basically the shape. And um, and basically uh, the way this works is uh, we're taking uh, like the standard. Um, a standard coordinate, an X and a Y, like into a function, and then we fold space many different ways uh, to to create this. It's very similar to origami in a way. Um, and then once the space is folded, I'm using I'm using the the transformed coordinate to read from a texture that you see down here. But really, what this is 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 that it's a <laughs> it's a 2D coordinate that's being transformed, right? So let, we can have a look at that real quick. Uh, let me, well, I don't have to do that. I could just go, let's say, over here and set the color to black, let's say. And then uh, I can just look at the UV coordinate and I can put that in the red and the green channel of the, co of the final color. And then we can kind of see what we're doing. Um, it's a little bit dark here, so let's just multiply this by something so we can see better. Um, and so, yeah, so the red and the green here kind of... Um, like the red is the x coordinate and the green is the y coordinate and uh, they 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 come in straight and then the function kind of folds it up into this weird star form and I can also put an absolute around that to show the middle there um, and so that we can use to make stuff in 3d um, so to to get this in 3D, I'm going to use a ray marcher, and a ray marcher is a is a, a simple rendering engine that you can make in a, inside of a shader. I'm I'm just going to use a template, um, but I explained exactly how to make that from scratch, and the link is in the description below. But for now, I'm I'm just going to use that. Um, otherwise, this video would be too long. So I'm going to open another tab here. I'm going to go shader toy again, and I'm going to type here ray marching ray marching starting point over there and press enter and the first one is the template I'm talking about all right and that's just a cube that you can spin around with the mouse great and so now um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste some of this code here um, and so this code is explained in the Koch curve uh, tutorial that is linked below um, so yeah, but for now I'm just going to copy this. So I'm going to copy it from line 18 to line 43. So right click, copy, and then over here I'm going to make a function and I'm going to put that function right here on line 30. And that function is going to return a UV coordinate, which is a VEC2. And, um, and Inside of here is going to be all of that. And as an input here, it's going to take a UV coordinate. So basically this function just takes a coordinate, folds it up many different ways, and outputs a coordinate. That's all it does. Um, and so then at the end of this, I'm going to return that. Uh, return that same coordinate, or well, the folded up coordinate. 
Uh, and then I can see, I can alt enter to see if it compiles. And I say, okay, well, it doesn't compile because there's, I made an extra function here called n, uh, which I'm going to copy from here. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to copy that function. Um, yeah, control C, and then over here, control V. Uh, this basically just returns a, like, takes as an input an angle, and as an output, it gives me a vector around the clock, basically. Uh, so, I don't know, call it angle to vector. Anyways, it doesn't really matter for this video. Um, so, let me see if I can compile that. And over here, I use the mouse. I'm just going to take that out for now. Yeah, let's just take that out. Okay, so now that compiles without any problems. So now we can look at that over here. So let's just uh, get rid of this cube for one second. So I can go over there and uh, multiply the color by zero so that everything gets black. And then we can have a look at that at that Koch um, UV. So let's say vec to ST equals S. So, so UV, like the name UV is often used for for a coordinate, for a 2D coordinate, uh, but I'm already using UV here and I don't really want to overwrite it. So another uh, one that you often see is ST. Uh, so that's why I call it ST over here. Um, Koch, and then as an input, it's going to give me my UV coordinate. And then I'm going to get that folded output. And then uh, let's just visualize that. So. And here I'm just saying the red and the green channel should be the coordinate that I just got out. And it gives me that. And um, that's a little bit saturated. So actually, and let me just make these functions smaller here. Um, over here, there is one thing that we have to add here. Uh, we just have to divide our UV by scale. Uh, divide equals scale to get it um, <coughs> properly normalized basically and so that's a little bit dark let me just make it a bit brighter times four let's say okay so now we have something in the red and in the green channel um, that we could use to do ray marching now uh, so let's just um, let me see here what would be better to do. Um, yeah, so what I could do, so so with, with ray marching, so if I get back here. So with ray marching, everything depends, uh, you're, you're making distance functions. And a distance function is just a function that, that and, and again, like if you don't know what I'm talking about here, uh, like you should, you should check out the ray marching video and then you understand more. Um, but basically how a shape is defined is by a function that that um, you put a point in, in 3D space into that function and as an output it gives you the distance to an object. In this case the distance to a cube. So this is a signed distance function also called SDF. This is an SDF for a box and if you like if you look over here it might get dist functions then here it says SD box. It, so like it gives as an input as an input the 3D coordinate goes into it, and, and the size of the box, and then as an output it gives me the distance to that box. Okay, so um, so yeah, so everything here works with distances. And now it turns out that if I uh, if I look over here, and I look at my Koch curve, and let's just look at one like not both colors at the same time. But let's just look at one color. Let's just look at the Y coordinate here, let's say. Uh, dot Y. That is basically a distance, right? Because it's a bit like, this gives me the distance to the, to, the, to the edge over here, right? So over here, the color is white because the distance to the edge is, is let's say, larger than one. And as we get closer to, to the edge, the color gets darker and darker until it's black, which which means we're on like we're right on the edge, and then on the inside it's it's black, but it actually it's negative. Um, it's just that negative also makes, or negative values, um, if you output them as a color, they come out as black. Um, 
but we can look at the inside as well. Like for instance, I could just turn this around here, this, this number, and now I only see the inside of this, right? Or I, um, I could see both the outside and the inside of this by putting the absolute around this. And now I have the outside and the inside of this. Uh, but I'm like, for now, I, I, I'm just interested in the outside. So, um, so that would be this. Uh, because this we can use, this is already a distance function. It's just a 2D distance function. Um, so let's see if we can't use this. Um, so let me go over here. Let's get rid of this again. Okay, we're back to the cube. And let's use that call as a distance function over here inside of the getDist function. Okay. Um, so what I could do, okay, so uh, so here I'm going to call the Koch function. It's just that the Koch function is a 2D fractal, right? So I can't put a 3D point into that. I can only put a 2D point into that. Um, but uh, I can just, f uh, out of my position, which is three-dimensional, I can just I can just take two axes and then just like get rid of the last one, right? So I can take, uh, so, so in this coordinate system, x goes left to right and, and z goes up and down. So we can, we can just put x and z into this and, um, and get out of that our, our folded coordinate. And now what we could do is we could say, Okay, well, instead of the distance is the distance to a box, let's just, let's just take the distance to, to that star that, uh, that we had, right? Um, so for that, I can just say d equals st dot y, let's say. And now, uh, so now the box is being overwritten. And now I have this weird looking, uh, <coughs> weird pixely looking, uh, pillar over here. That starts looking extra weird when we look up and down. And it's a bit hard to figure out maybe what we're looking at here. But this is actually uh, that co that snowflake, but extruded infinitely up and down. And uh, um, let's see if we can't look at it in a better way. And actually, I don't want it to go up and down. I want it to go, um, I want it to lie on its side. And so for that, I can just use x, y over here. And it makes it like that. Uh, so, yeah, but it's a bit hard to see here what's going on. So what I could do is I could just take a slice of this, okay? And uh, the way to do that is I can use a Boolean operation. I can say d equals uh, the maximum of uh, d and, let's say, p dot c. And what that will do is that will cut off half of this half of this bar okay and now you can see that like what we're looking at here is actually the Koch curve that is pretty neat okay let me zoom in a little bit on this thing like that okay so so we have something that we can use in 3d um, so what we could do, I mean, one of the simplest things that we could do is, um, also cut it on the other side. Um, so for that, I can just put an absolute around here and then I have an infinitely thin slice of a Koch curve right now. That's going to look a bit glitchy probably. Yeah, like that. Uh, but if we subtract a little bit from that, then we can make a little, a little flake like this. Uh, by the way, another interesting thing about this, this particular Koch curve that I saw the other day is that uh, this is actually just a hexagonal tile uh, and you can, you, can click, you can click them together um, in such a way that you have a Koch curve and then the inverse of a Koch curve and then a Koch curve and the inverse of a Koch curve. It's pretty interesting. You can, you can tile the plane with this thing. Um, but anyways, that's not what this is about. Uh, so yeah, so that's that's a 3d that's a 3d fractal in a sense so now let's see if we can't like make this a bit more interesting but play play around with this um, so what i can do okay so right now what i've done is i had the infinite bar of of Koch curve and i just took one slice of it right um, 
but let's see what else I can do. Let me go back to the infinite bar. And um, let's call this instead of st. Let me let me call this uh, what what this is here. This is the x y projection, right? So x y. Let me call this x y. Okay. Now let me make another bar. Let me let me make a bar that like is ninety degrees rotated from this one, and it's not x y. It lies in the. I'm just gonna think about this. Uh, Z in the YZ plane. Uh, and we have YZ. Let's have a look at that. YZ. Okay, so that's the same thing, but 90 degrees rotated. Okay. Uh, but now what I can do is I can take the intersection of both of those. Okay, so I have one bar like this, one bar like that. If I take the intersection, then it will only show where both where both bars exist. Right? It's like the Venn diagram of both bars. Um, so let's do that. So what I and you do you do intersection between two two objects with a max function. Uh, I made a video about that. Uh, link is in the description as well. Ray marching operators, I believe. Um, and then you know how to boolean objects together, which is um, which is very powerful. Okay, so. Now we have um, the object like this. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit pixely, and that's because there's just too much information here. Uh, and that is because our Koch curve has 10 iterations over here. So we can, we can, we can safely lower that a little bit. Uh, say five, well, it can even be lower. I think we should like lower it to four, and we can see a bit better. So that's already starting to look pretty interesting. Now I did that twice. Let's do that three times because we have one more orientation to go. So let me just copy this again. And uh, so x, y, y, z, and x, z, x, z, x, z. And then I just have to max this again. So I have to go over here and do xz dot y okay and now we have the finished shape or at least for 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 this way of making a 3d fractal so um let's uh, put like a more interesting material on this uh, so let me just go down here to where i do the material over here and uh let's uh let's use the normal to color this so we can see it a little bit better so i'm going to stick to normal and times 0.5 plus 0.5 it. So now I have something like that. And uh, let's make it reflective, because why the fuck not? Um, so let me just add, uh, I don't know, maybe this one. And then I'm going to use the reflection vector that I was already calculated in the template. And I'm going to use that. So I'm going to do call, and I'm going to multiply that times equals texture I channel zero with R and then dot RGB dot RGB and, uh, and yeah then we'll have this alien looking artifact over here which is pretty neat all right so that is one way that you could do this uh, let's see if we can't make another way um, let me go back over here um, because another thing I could do you could imagine if you have that if you have that snowflake you could take the revolution of that snowflake which is basically taking the snowflake and rotating it around okay so let's just see if we can can do that okay so for this I'm just gonna uh, I'm just gonna over here and say this is um, whatever uh, straight intersection the straight intersection let's just call it like that okay uh, so let's try to make a revolution so let me go over here and take this 
Um, and now we have to think about how do we do a revolution. Um, yeah, so normally, if, if, if we have, like, if we're evaluating the curve, we have the y, which is up and down, and we have the, the x, which is left and right, right? Now, if instead of left and right, the x, if I take instead of that, just the distance from the point, wherever the point is in 3D space, so like the point might be like here in 3D space, right? Uh, but I'm not taking the x, the x distance, I'm taking, I'm, or, yeah, I'm not taking the x-coordinate, I'm just taking the distance to the origin. Okay, I hope that makes sense. This is, uh, if you want to know how this works, the revolution thing, then um, you want to know how a torus is, is made. And uh, I made a video about that. Uh, go check it out in the description. Um, so instead of p dot x, y, I'm going to make a different coordinate here. I'm going to make a coordinate where the first, where the x is replaced by not the x so normally the, normally we use the x-coordinate, now we use the distance to the origin as opposed to the x-coordinate. And I'm still going to use... Uh, now hang on a second... Okay, it's the distance to the origin but in the x-z plane, in the flat plane. Okay, so y is pointing up, x is pointing this way, z is pointing in and out. Okay, I, and so I'm going to take the distance in the in the ground plane to the origin. And that's why this is x, z. Okay, and then dot y. Um, and this is a vec2, not a vec3. Uh, and let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now we have that. So let's do d equals um, x, y, dot y. Okay, and look at that. Now we have a revolution. That's pretty neat. That is really neat. Actually, okay, so now we have a revolution. Uh, now we can just do the same thing as what I did before with the straight projection, where I take the intersection of one, you know, of one object, another object, another object. Well, I can similarly take the intersection of all the revolutions. Okay, so... Um, uh, so let me just go over here, copy paste this uh, two times, and I'm going to do the same thing as what I did up here for the straight one. So I'm going to do yz, and this one is xz, and then uh, this is, uh, okay, i got to think about that. Okay, yeah, my naming is a bit unfortunate right now. Uh, I think the naming should probably be the naming of this. Um, Anyways, I always get flack from you guys about naming my parameters. Uh, if you if you have better if you have a better idea for this, then let me know in the comment below. Uh, but I'm just gonna match this to whatever this is. Okay, so that's x uh, x z. Uh, then I'm gonna do y z. So y z. And the last coordinate is what this isn't, right? So it's x, y, z. Well, this is y and z, so this should be x. Um, and over here, I'm going to do x, y, and this is z. Okay, so now this one is x, y. This one is y, z. Oh, that was already y, z. Okay, and then I could just use the same thing as what I did over here. Okay, and then let's have a look at this bad boy. Wow, that's pretty neat. That really starts getting to be a pretty cool alien artifact, I think. Um, okay, now let's let's try to make this a bit less spiky. Uh, just as a bonus. So what I can do is um, I can morph this into a sphere. Okay, and let's look at what a sphere looks like first. So the sphere is just the distance to the origin basically, if the, the sphere is at the origin anyways. So the formula, the distance formula for a sphere is just this. And this is really not that mysterious. It, it, it's just um, 
let the length of p p p is a position in 3D space, and the and the and you can um, interpret p as a vector that goes from the origin to that point, and the length of that vector is basically just the distance from that point to the origin. That's really what it is. And then you subtract the radius of the sphere from that. Okay, and then you get a sphere like that. Um, and if I have a sphere like that, I can, I can, um, I can morph between any object and any other object. That's one cool thing about about distance functions. Distance functions are really, really cool. You can do a lot of insane shit with it. Uh, so I'm gonna mix between uh, my fractal, my D here, and a sphere, and. Um, and let's see here. So if I set this to zero, then it just gives me the original fractal. If I set this to one, it gives me the sphere. If I set this anywhere in between, it's going to morph between the two. Okay. And so that allows you to do all kinds of cool stuff. So yeah, so that's that's a pretty pretty cool looking thing. Um, yeah, what could this be? So oftentimes when I when, like I just play around with stuff, you know, until I get something cool, and then I, you know, well, first of all, I try to understand how things work, and then and then play with it until I have something cool. So this could be a really cool futuristic-looking um, Christmas ball or something like that. Um, and we could you could morph that so you could say, uh, give me the sign of the time, uh, and that has to be between zero and one. So uh, times 0.5 plus 0.5, let's say. And then we get this Morphe situation. Um, and also with this morphing, you can also, uh, you can go outside of the zero one range to, to, to get different effects. So if you have one shape and then you have like a, a, another shape that, that surrounds that shape, if you, if you mix it with a value between zero and one, then it just goes from one shape to the other shape. But if you go past one, then you can actually invert the shape, which is another, which is another cool thing. It, it, it does kind of invalidate your distance function a little bit, so you have to do it kind of sparingly. But uh, so for instance, I can, I can go to the outside. I can project, I can project the, like what was inside of the sphere and project it outside of the sphere, which is pretty neat. Uh, but yeah, you have to do this sparingly because, like, yeah, sometimes if you get certain angles, it, it starts glitching because the, you see on the edge there, it glitches. Uh, and that's because the distance function is, um, is too aggressive now. So you, you, you can do it sometimes, but you have to, you have to be a bit um, careful with it. So I am not going to do that. I'm just going to stay on the inside of this thing. Uh, and uh, maybe... Um, Maybe we can rotate it. So in order to rotate it, you just can rotate the uh, the coordinate. So just do that. T times 0.2, let's say. And there we have a rotating ball. So there you have it. That was one way, at least, to turn the Koch fractal into a 3D fractal. Um, yeah, there are more ways to do this. I'll make future videos about this, but uh, I'll end this here. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you've watched all this way, then uh, I take it you get something out of my videos. Uh, if you want, you can support me. There are many different ways to do that. There are some links over here, I believe. Uh, uh, of the different ways to support me uh, through Patreon, through PayPal. There's a new one up there at the top, FX hash. Uh, I've been experimenting with creating generative NFTs on FX hash, which is really cool. Instead of uploading uh, like an image or a video, you upload a generator. Uh, that could be a shader or any kind of uh, mini website. So I've been playing with that and uh, I've been making some NFTs there and uh, I thought it could maybe be cool to, at the end of a tutorial to make a little NFT for that uh, with the end result of that tutorial. Um, I did that once before for the alien orb one. 
uh, as a test and that, uh, that worked out pretty well. Uh, so I made one for this effect as well. So um, I will put a link in the description, you can have a look. Um, and uh, if you feel so inclined, you can support me uh, like that. So it's a one-on-one, -on -one, so there's only one person that can buy it. Uh, anyways, I'm experimenting with this and uh, I'm just trying to figure out how this, how this whole thing works and uh, what I can do with it. So anyways, again, thanks for watching and thanks for being awesome and I will see you next time.